Um, I just got in last night. Um, uh, this is Gael. Hola. If, if I put a song out there, it's because I truly believe in it. It's because I honestly think it's good and because I feel that people are going to connect with it. And, and, and Enrique Iglesias is a Spanish singer, songwriter, producer and actor dubbed the king of Latin pop. He has various prestigious music awards under his belt and a huge fan base all around the world. Watch our new video to get to know the pop icon and the hottest Spanish macho in the modern music industry. Enrique Iglesias, how the king of Latin pop lives and how he spends his millions. Enrique Miguel Iglesias Presler was born on May 8, 1975 in Madrid to Julio Iglesias, a famous Spanish singer, and Isabel Presler, a socialite and TV host of Filipino descent. A bit later, they found out that Enrique had a condition called Cetus Inversus, a rare abnormality characterized by a reversed position of organs compared to normal anatomy. The boy became the third child in the family. At that point, his parents had a son, Julio Jr., and a daughter, Maria. However, the family was not picture perfect. The insanely famous father spent all his time touring and enjoying the company of the charmed fans, and he didn't shower his kids with attention. When Enrique turned three, his parents filed for divorce and separated. Julio moved to Miami, while Isabel stayed with the kids in Madrid. The woman buried herself in work to provide for her family, and she had no time left to do things around the house. She hired a nanny named Elvira Olivares to get some help with the house and the kids, and little Enrique got very attached to her. When the boy was six, he spent a year living in Belgrade with his mother, but December 1981 had some challenging times in store for the Iglesias Brazler family. His paternal grandfather was kidnapped by the Basque separatist organization who demanded ransom for him. They threatened the lives of other family members if the family didn't do what they were told. Fortunately, the police managed to recover the grandfather from captivity, and Julio decided to take his kids to the U.S. to keep them safe. There, the nine-year-old Enrique had a completely new life with bodyguards and a school for celebrity kids. The students had limousines taking them to school, which made Enrique feel miserable as his father deemed it unnecessary to pay for his children's comfort and gave him some beat-up old car. The relationship between the father and the son didn't really change after moving. Julio was still cold to him and favored his older brother. The father's new woman didn't bring a lot of warmth and comfort to the house either. The only person that cheered Enrique up was his nanny, who traveled to Miami with him. The boy preferred to be alone. He kept a diary and listened to music. He repeatedly hinted that he would like to become a singer, but his father never believed in his talent. He demanded that Enrique apply to the business program at the University of Miami after graduating from school. Despite that, Enrique Iglesias started writing songs when he was 16, hoping to release his own album one day. He made his first attempt at performing when he was still in school. He took part in a school musical and sang with his friends in local restaurants. He kept it hushed so that his famous father would never find out. He wanted to become a self-made artist and he even came up with a stage name. Enrique Martinez, and claimed to be from Guatemala. He borrowed money from his beloved nanny and used it to record one Spanish song and two English songs. The promotion strategy boiled down to sending his demos to record labels, but his works didn't really make a splash. This really weighed down on the aspiring singer, and he used to drown his sorrows in whiskey. He would sit in bars in a sad mood and hum his melodies to himself. One fateful evening, he crossed paths with Guillermo Santiso, the manager of the Mexican record label Fonoviso Records. This resulted in Iglesias dropping out of the university in 1994 after only a year of studying. Despite his father's demands to go back to the university, he signed a deal with the label and went to Canada to start working on his first album. In the fall of 1995, he released his debut collection of songs titled Enrique Iglesias, which he dedicated to his nanny. The record had songs in Spanish, including popular tracks like Experiencia Religiosa, No Llores Por Mi, and Si Tu Te Vas. Iglesias wrote the lyrics of the latter song when he was a teenager, and it became the leading single in his debut album, which also got a music video. Si tu te vas, el dolor me... The album became a hit in Portugal, Spain, and Italy, 
We should mention that the mid-90s were the era of Mexican telenovelas, and the managers of the up-and-coming star hopped on the bandwagon. The track Por Marte was featured in the telenovela Marisol, which made it insanely popular. Thanks to it, a million album copies were sold within a week. The album also won the Grammy Award for Best Latin Pop Performance. By the way, Enrique's father thought that his son's first work was a disaster and claimed that no one would buy it. But the young artist came to the music industry with a bang and didn't want to stop there, so he immediately started working on his second album. At the beginning of 1997, he presented the studio album Vivir, which was nominated for the Grammy Award and debuted at number one on the Billboard Top Latin Albums chart. Fun fact, Enrique's album pushed down Julio Iglesias' album, Tango, from the top. In 1997, the same year, Enrique went on his first solo tour, performing in 16 countries and received an American Music Awards nomination for Favorite Latin Artist. Ironically, his star father, Julio Iglesias, was nominated for the award too. The famous singer was enraged by the situation and stated that if his son won, he would leave the event in protest. Julio ended up winning and in his speech, he promised he would be in rivalry with his son as long as Enrique performs. It is said that Enrique asked the board not to give him the award as he loves and respects his father a lot. By the way, Julio did lose to his son as Enrique broke the record in this category both in the number of nominations and the number of wins. In 1998, Enrique released his third album, Cosas del Amor, which fans all over the world awaited with eager anticipation. The singles Esperanza and Nunca Te Olvidaré became the listeners' favorites peaking on the U.S. music charts. Pero nunca te olvidaré. By the way, the song Nunca Te Olvidaré became the theme song for the TV show with the same name, known to the US audience as Never Forget You. The singer almost immediately went on a tour to support the album, sponsored by the fast food chain McDonald's. The singer gave a hundred shows around the world during the tour. In the beginning of the next year, Iglesias enjoyed the fruits of his labor. He finally won the title of Favorite Latin Artist at the American Music Awards, beating the insanely popular Ricky Martin. His third studio album was nominated for the Grammy Awards in the category Best Latin Pop Album. During that time, Enrique released the single Bailamos, which was originally on the third album. This album version was available only in some countries in Latin America. Later, the song was included in the fourth studio album, Enrique, which was his first album in English. By the way, the song Bailamos is written in Spanglish, which fuses English and Spanish words into a unique linguistic composition. The song had an astounding success. The American actor Will Smith heard the song at a concert and offered to make it the soundtrack of his movie Wild Wild West. The song arrangement was tweaked a little and they added more drive to it. Although the movie didn't impress viewers and critics, the single became a solid hit, selling 5 million copies. The fourth album, Enrique, was recorded in collaboration with the American record label Interscope Records, which works with world-class stars. Bailamos wasn't the only commercially successful song. Listeners also enjoyed the song's Rhythm Divine. All I need is a rhythm divine. Be With You. I can't sleep all night. And naturally, the romantic duet with Whitney Houston, could I have this kiss forever? By the way, the musicians recorded their parts in the song separately on different continents. They didn't meet until they shot the music video for the song. The album debuted at number 33 on the Billboard 200 chart and went platinum in the US after selling a million copies. In 2000, the singer released the song collection Bailamos Greatest Hits and went on another world tour. After that, he was off the radar for some time and came back only in the fall of 2001 with a new poetic track, Hero. I can be your hero, baby. Soon, Enrique Iglesias released his fifth studio album titled Escape. The day they shot the music video for the track was marked by a life-changing encounter. Here's how it goes. All it takes. 
The main role in the video was given to Anna Kornikova, a Russian tennis player who used to compete in the professional league in the early 2000s. Some people say that the atmosphere during the first meeting of Enrique and Anna was quite strained. The singer refused to follow the script and kiss the tennis player. It turned out to be about the girl's inflamed lip, because of which he called her a pimple-faced teenager. The makeup artist quickly fixed the issue and the shooting went fine. Others say the opposite. The star felt an immediate attraction. Still, soon Enrique and Anna started dating. The couple was often seen together and a little later, the beauty showed off an engagement ring with a huge 11-carat pink diamond. The smitten singer paid $2.5 million for the wonderful design, but the wedding never happened. Iglesias praised his relationship in an interview, describing it as very comfortable and perfect, and calling Anna the woman of his dreams as she shares his vision of a happy and quiet family life. The tennis player eagerly confirmed the words of her fiancé, and they seemed to be a perfect couple. No matter how hard the press tried, they could never get any information about the lovers unless they wanted to share something themselves. Enrique used to keep his personal life private even before he met Kornikova. He allegedly dated actresses Sofia Vergara, Shannon Elizabeth, and Selena Toribio, models Samantha Torres, and Cynthia Kirchner, and the singer Christina Aguilera. There were also rumors that the artist dated Jennifer Love Hewitt, who was featured in the music video for his song Hero. In September 2002, Iglesias decided to go back to making songs in Spanish and released the album titled Quizás which is rightfully crowned as one of his best works. It brought the artist a Latin Grammy Awards nomination for Best Male Pop Vocal Album. It was a commercial success as well, with more than 2.5 million copies sold worldwide. Enrique shot a music video for the titular song, which he dedicated to his father. The track was nominated for the American Music Awards, and various TV shows brought the singer to perform in his first language. The next year, Enrique released his seventh studio album, which he decided to title Just Seven. Curiously, Julio Iglesias also released the 77th studio album almost at the same time. But this time, Iglesias Sr. won. Critics proclaimed that his work was almost a masterpiece, while his son's album received negative reviews. Still, there was a promotional tour in support of the album. Enrique had dozens of concerts around the world, visiting South Africa for the first time. After that, he went on a long hiatus. He returned in 2006 with the tour for the fans, featuring the old hits. The singer released his next eighth album, Insomniac, in the summer of 2007. The title seemed to be a telling one as the singer notoriously suffers from insomnia, but some music connoisseurs stated that the title was inspired by the 1995 album of the American rock band Green Day. Indeed, the singer has had trouble falling asleep for a long time. He shared in an interview that he has to take sleeping pills to get some rest. The Iglesias album had 15 tracks, including the songs Ring My Bells, and tired of being sorry. A year later, the bonus track version of the album was released, featuring the single Can You Hear Me. The song became the official song of the UFR Euro 2008. Soon after that, Enrique received the titles of Best Selling Latin Performer and Best Selling Spanish Artist. In 2009, radio stations started streaming a new song by Iglesias, Lost Inside Your Love. Despite speculation, it wasn't a single. Lost inside your love, On January 12, 2010, a massive earthquake struck Haiti, leaving the island devastated. When the band Linkin Park announced they were working on a compilation album to raise money for Haiti, Enrique was one of the first artists to join the project. His song, It Must Be Love, made it to the song collection Download to Donate for Haiti. A month after that, Iglesias recorded part of the remake of Michael Jackson's song We Are the World. The raised money was also donated to humanitarian aid in Haiti. We should mention that the famous Spanish singer has always shown compassion for people who need any kind of help. He raises money to aid places that suffer from natural disasters and gives charity concerts around the world. In the summer of 2010, the singer released the ninth studio album, Euphoria. 
The experimental eclectic record had lots of unexpected collaborations. For instance, the single I Like It featured the American rapper Pitbull. Enrique also collaborated with one of the most commercially successful R&B artists, Usher, on the track Dirty Dancer. After releasing the album, Enrique once again disappeared from the music industry. There were rumors that the singer was going through a rough patch in his personal life. Enrique wanted to have kids, while his girlfriend Anna Kornikova was ready to take a serious step like this only after tying the knot. There were rumors that the couple broke up, but they never gave any official statements, just as usual. In 2014, Enrique came back to the music industry with the song Bailando, for which he also made a music video. In the first week, the video got 800,000 views, and now it sits at 3.4 billion views. By the way, the song has four versions – English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Brazilian. The track won several Latin Grammy Awards, including the award for Song of the Year. Apart from that, he set a new record spending 41 weeks at number one on the Billboard Hot Latin Songs chart. The song was topping the chart from May 17, 2014 to February 25, 2015. It seemed like the singer got the golden ticket. He immediately released a music video for the song El Perador from his 10th studio album Sex Plus Love. The record had features with Pitbull, Jennifer Lopez, Kylie Minogue, and other star music artists. Interestingly enough, the song Noche y de Dia was supposed to promote the region of Galicia in Spain. The local authorities paid him 300,000 euros for capturing the beauty of the location in this video. But Galicia appeared in the video for only 45 seconds, which led to a scandal. The newspaper's headline said Enrique Iglesias and the presumed theft of 300,000 Galician euros, but the story didn't get any further development. The album release was followed by a three-year tour. In December 2016, the world was discussing a hot topic. Enrique Iglesias and Anna Kornikova welcomed twins, Nicholas and Lucy. People started speculating about the couple having children via a surrogate, as Anna made almost no public appearances. She quit professional sports and disappeared from the media. The ex-tennis player had to post photos of her with a baby bump to put the rumors to rest. Three years later, attentive Instagram users spotted that there was a slight change in the woman's account. Now her last name was Kornikova Iglesias. The update sparked a wave of wedding rumors. A bit later, the singer's brother Julio announced that Enrique and Anna were expecting a daughter. The little Masha was born on January 30, 2019. Iglesias sometimes shares a rare peek at the life of his big family on social media. They prefer to stay in, spend time on their yachts, or play with their pets. The spouses love to go to restaurants and order seafood, spring rolls, and peking duck. Enrique has always expressed that he prefers this kind of life to parties and public events. As for the artistic endeavors of the star, they came down to mainly collaborating with other artists. For example, in 2018, he released a music video for the song El Baño, featuring Bad Bunny. In 2020, he recorded the track Football y Rumba with the Puerto Rican musician Anuel A.A. In September 2021, the artist released his 11th studio album, Final Volume 1. Enrique announced that this is the first piece of his last album. The release of the second part is scheduled for 2024. He still writes songs because he loves the creative process and now he sees himself as a songwriter rather than a singer. By the way, Enrique co-writes songs for other artists, like the hit song by Jennifer Lopez, Dance Again. In the same year, in 2021, Iglesias went on tour across North America with Ricky Martin. In 2023, he kicked off the tour, The Trilogy. And this time, the two performers were joined by Pitbull. Unfortunately, the fans are not impressed with Enrique's performance on stage. Viewers posed videos of the artist singing off-key, forgetting the lyrics, and moving in a weird way. On top of that, he often lets the audience sing his hit songs for him. 
Many people assume that he appears on stage drunk. Apart from music, Enrique has always taken an interest in cinema, and he admits that he'd be happy to be cast in an interesting project. He's had some acting experience throughout his career, but it was very scarce. He had small roles in the comedy TV shows Two and a Half Men and How I Met Your Mother. In 2003, the singer made an appearance in the famous Robert Rodriguez movie Once Upon a Time in Mexico. I didn't think you'd ever come back for this thing. Neither did I. Are we on? I'm let you know. As of now, Iglesias' net worth is estimated at $100 million. He makes money both from music and brand deals. The singer appeared in the famous Pepsi commercial alongside Britney Spears, Pink, and Beyonce, promoted lace chips, the American rum Atlantico, Chrysler cars together with Jennifer Lopez, and male fragrance by Azaro. But in real life, he doesn't really like using fragrance as he doesn't enjoy the aroma. Enrique Iglesias is known for being a foodie. He loves good food so much that he's tried to start his own business several times. One time, he opened a place at the luxurious Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Miami. However, for some reason, the business didn't gain traction. Still, the Spanish singer didn't let it break his entrepreneurial stride and said yes to the offer from the tennis player Rafael Nadal. He opened the restaurant chain Tatel Restaurants, and Enrique invested in the project along with Cristiano Ronaldo and Spanish NBA players Pau Gasol and Rudy Fernandez. Things seem to be working out pretty well for the star restaurant owners. They open locations in Doha, Madrid, Ibiza, and Los Angeles. The menu has traditional Spanish and European cuisine served to the accompaniment of soothing live music. Now, let's talk about how the go-getter singer and businessman prefers to spend his millions. Obviously, the property collection deserves some attention. The star couple Enrique and Anna moved to their own luxurious mansion in Miami in 2013. This is when rumors started to circulate. The man insisted on starting a family and the tennis player wanted to get married. It's unknown if there's any connection between the events and if there ever was a wedding, but it is sure that the couple set up their family residence at that time. The house is located in the prestigious area of Bay Point, the neighborhood loved by world-class stars. Other Bay Point residents include Cher, Matt Damon, Ricky Martin, and Enrique's father with his family. The preparation process before the moving was no joke. First, in 2009, the Iglesias Kornikova couple bought several pieces of land for $9 million and demolished all buildings on them. After that, they spent $11 million to build the stunning mansion. Now, there's a 21,000-square-foot house, a security house, a tennis court, a swimming pool, and even a private pier on the premises. Although the family has more than enough money, Anna prefers to do household chores herself. At least this is what the people close to the couple say. According to them, Anna is a wonderful cook. The kitchen is her source of energy, and she's in her element there. Now, the price of the property is estimated at $26 million. In 2015, the couple bought an unfinished house not far from their residence. The property in a private neighborhood was originally meant for Anna's grandparents, but later the idea was scrapped because the house was too big for them. It's funny because the couple profited from the deal. They bought the house for $1.8 million and sold it for $4.8 million. In the 7,000-square-foot house, there were six bedrooms, spacious living rooms, and a dining room, and a swimming pool with a recreation area in the backyard. In 2004, Enrique sold his Star Island house in Miami, which he purchased in 2000. The house ended up being sold for $22.5 million, which is $1.5 million less than what the singer asked for. The Moresque-style villa with the romantic name Jasmine looks like a real palace. Small towers, vibrant mosaic, arched windows, carved elements, and colorful fabrics. The magnificent lighted fountain could be considered the piece de resistance of the house. The house was built in the 1930s, and Iglesias restored and added his personal touch to it. When it comes to movable property, Enrique is rather conservative. His car collection is worth about $330,000. He owns a first-generation BMW X5, a 335-horsepower classic worth $50,000. He also has the reliable and comfortable Cadillac Escalade, a V-Class Mercedes, a BMW X3, and an Audi A3. The singer is known to have and actively use a $3.5 million Gulfstream 4 jet. With a touring schedule like his, it's more of a necessity rather than a luxury. 
By the way, Enrique is a certified pilot, but he prefers to leave the wheel to the professionals. In the early days of Enrique's career, he had a signature mole on his cheek, but he decided to remove it in 2003 following medical advice. The singer adores dogs, and he and Anna have a whole pack. As for insects, he's terrified of them, especially spiders and roaches. Another passion of the star is soccer. He even shared that if he hadn't chosen to become a musician, he would have been a soccer player. Iglesias' clothing style is casual, and he can't stand wearing suits. He has more than 300 t-shirts in his closet, and he spent his first paycheck on 10 pairs of jeans. Enrique Iglesias is one of the most commercially successful Latin American singers. He sold more than 180 million records all over the world and has received 190 awards. Billboard named him the top Latin artist of all time for his numerous achievements, popularity, and charting tracks. Even Iglesias Sr. alluded to Enrique's success, and one time he said, My son is a better singer than me. Usually, it's almost impossible to bring Julio to express his opinion on his son's work. Whenever the press asks him if he and his son would ever record a duet, he gives a negative answer. As for Enrique, he deeply respects his father and his work, but they don't see each other that much. Do you like the work of Enrique Iglesias? Why don't you come on inside so we can visit? Oh, I'll see you later, Fernando. Thank you for your thoughtful soup. It nourishes my body as your beauty nourishes my soul. <laughs> if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting. <laughs>